Thank you for that wonderful reading of that psalm. I just love that psalm. Such a, um, from sadness to joy. I love that. Today, our second reading is from the Gospel of Luke, and I think it's on page 57 in the New Testament, I think. And it's, we're going to read chapter 1, verses 57 to 66. So let's hear what the Spirit may have to say to us today. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, no, he is to be called John. They said to her, none of your relatives have this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and he wrote, his name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all of their neighbors and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, what then will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. This, friends, is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Six months before Christ was born, history was made in this small town in the hill country in Judea, south of Jerusalem. Led by the Spirit of God, an older couple faithfully named their son John. And everyone who heard it was amazed. The Gospel of Luke has been called the Gospel of Amazement. There are, I think, five words in the ancient Greek that can be translated amazed or something like amazed and our Bible translates them astonished, marveled, wondered, astounded, spellbound. And of course, these words apply to Jesus, and Luke applies them to Jesus, but also to other people, like crowds of people, like people who heard Jesus speak, like um, people who showed incredible faith. Even Jesus was amazed. The theme for our messages during Advent has been how a weary world rejoices. And we've explored this theme through the first chapter of Luke. We're still in the first chapter of Luke. Next week, we'll go to chapter two. The first Sunday's focus was to acknowledge our weariness, and that is both literal and also including uh, the weary world, like in the song, that the all holy night, the weary world, or how sad we may feel during Advent, even though we don't know why, or the things that have been going on in our lives this year. Last, uh, last week's focus was to find joy in connection. In the Sunday school class today, we had the question, are we meant to be alone? And this, this uh, message last week talked about that, how Mary went to see Elizabeth right after she found out that Elizabeth was with child, after the, Mary told, the angel told Mary she was going to be with child, and they came together and they were so happy and joyful together and they gave each other courage to go on in these miraculous things that they would be doing with God. And today's theme is allowing ourselves to be amazed, allowing ourselves to be amazed. And that is chosen purposely, allowing, because sometimes we are resistant, honestly, to being amazed. So we'll explore that uh, today with Luke's story about the birth of John the Baptist, we later know him John the Baptist, and what happened in that birth story and how people were amazed and why they were amazed. Of course, later John the Baptizer will baptize Jesus and uh, he will call people to faith there in the wilderness. And so as I approach today's scripture and the theme of amazement, there was also a question in our Sunday school class that I had thought of before, and that is, what has made you really amazed? in your life? What 
what really, really, really amazed you. And so I tried to think of when that was, and this may not be number one, but it may be close. One year when our boys were about 12 and 15, we decided to go big and go to Costa Rica for our summer vacation. And so in the first few days, we drove our rental car. If you've ever been to Costa Rica, you can picture this on the map. We drove it from San Jose to a volcano named Arenal. And we stayed in a hotel near Arenal, and Arenal was very active during the years of 68 to about 2000, which is the time frame in which we went. At the hotel, we were eating outside, as you do lots of times when you're in Costa Rica, your restaurant is outside, we were eating out, we could see the, the mountain, and everyone told us nothing was going to happen that night. It was cloudy um, at that time during dinner, and nothing had happened for weeks, maybe months, and so nice you're here, but you're not seeing nothing. The sky cleared up when we went back to our rooms, and soon the mountain began to erupt. Glowing red molten lava was going all along the sides of the mountain that we could see. If you've seen National Geographic, you've seen this happening um, in nature. It is amazing. And it went down for hours, and the contrast of the fire against the night sky made it so much more spectacular, and we watched it as a family. Uh, we had two adjoining rooms. They had glass um, sliding doors. And so we watched it as a family, and then the boys went to their room. It was still going on uh, late, late, late into the night. And finally, we closed our curtains, Chuck and I, because we just couldn't stay up all night walking, watching a volcano. The next morning, we went to check on the boys and get them up for breakfast. And they had not closed their curtains. In fact, they had opened their door. They wanted to get the whole show. But they were asleep, and the volcano had finished erupting, and we were amazed a second time. All over the ceiling and all over the walls were huge tropical flying insects attached to these spaces. They weren't dangerous insects, I don't think. They looked like dragonflies, but they weren't. They had not closed anything. They wanted the whole thing. They wanted the whole drama. We might have gotten upset about this. Like, I don't want to sleep with bugs, like Indiana Jones style. But they woke up and they were happy. They were amazed. They were intrigued. I don't know how they got the bugs out. Maybe they went out later um, when housekeeping came. I don't know. They were still there when we left. So when our boys were little children, of course, they were like all little children, and they were amazed like about hourly, maybe, maybe you know, every five minutes sometimes. It only takes a puddle, a stick when you're walking to pick up a puppy on a leash or a little bug, and children are amazed. I believe that God wants us to be amazed at nature like little children, the tiny things and the huge things. And we live in a part of the world where you can be astonished every day. Can we not? Last night, did anyone hear the astonishing storm? That was a kind of a surprise storm coming up from the Gulf, um, heading up to our friends up north. So there's no reason to lose our childlike wonder. We can cultivate it back any time with nature. We can probably this afternoon feel a little more sensitive to it. But then what about faith? What about faith and our amazement with faith? Today, as we dwell in Luke's story, we remember how important amazement was to the gospel writers, not just Luke. And we know that amazement and faith is more important, more deep, more eternal than amazement at nature. And I'm afraid that this is where we lose our childlike wonder even more, even faster, 
than with nature. I think it was, I was about 18, maybe 19, when I stopped going to church for almost 10 years. And I lost my childlike sense of wonder. So Jesus warned about this, and he would say, come little children, come, you know, come, I'm going to talk to you, I want to share things with you, and you adults, you look at these little children, these are the ones that know about the kingdom of God, not you. You're being resistant, you're being dull, you're being bored, hello. He said, the kingdom of God is all around you. Look, be like these children. So tapping into our sense of wonder today, maybe remembering childlike wonder, what is so amazing here in our story from the Bible? What were people so amazed about? What should we be amazed about? So here is Pastor Sandra's testimony. This is my testimony about this. As the whole village comes to life with this baby's birth, the first amazing thing I see is God's promises unfolding exactly as they were prophesied and exactly as the angel said. I see it starting to happen. Then I see that God's purposes are being accomplished in an unexpected way. And this is is sort of the pattern God uses. They unfold, but you didn't expect the way it happened. This happens all the time. It's astonishing that this Older couple, the woman who could not have children all through her life and is now beyond childbearing age, and this man who stubbornly did not want to believe it, are the ones to have this honor of being the parents of John the Baptist. I think that's amazing. But nothing's impossible with God. And if that wasn't enough, God's Spirit has empowered this ordinary couple to be faithful when neighbors put peer pressure on them. So the crowd doesn't want the Lord to surprise them too much. They're they're good with um, this baby. They're good with this circumcision celebration. But they want things traditional. They want them, like, that's good. We want it culturally appropriate. And so at the time of the naming, when Elizabeth says his name will be John, they're Pushing back, they're like, no, nobody does that. That's not okay. And so they gesture to Zechariah to tell him the real answer. Maybe she's having a postpartum moment. I don't know. He'll tell us what the real answer is. And so since he can't speak, since he didn't believe the angel, they put a tablet in his hand. Maybe it was this size. I don't know. Um, a piece of stone, a piece of wood covered in wax, and he has the stylus, and he writes, his name is John. And they're all amazed. The next astonishing thing is that this man who hasn't been speaking for nine months now utters just this huge poem of praise. We did not read it today. It's very long. It's like Mary's Magnificat. Here he is, um, unable to speak. Maybe he was writing this poem in his head for when the baby was born. It's incredible. And then I'm amazed of the ripple effect of what this couple has done. The ripple effect of their not going along with peer pressure, of them being faithful. We can be faithful or we can make our neighbors happy. Have you ever had that situation in some way or another? I have. And so there's a ripple effect. It goes all through the countryside. It's like, have you heard about Zechariah and Elizabeth? They named their baby John. Oh, my goodness. And then the people say, what is this child going to be? For the hand of God was with him. We don't know what our faithfulness may stir up in other people. I don't know what... The things I'm saying right now might be stirring up in you. I'm sure something is being stirred up. Is my mic still on? There it is. There it is. There it is. The hand of the Lord was with John. The hand of the Lord is with every child. The child 
children who came up to light the candles and the message. All of us are children, aren't we? On all of us. The hand of the Lord to me, uh, we could have a whole Bible study on this, is love, protection, renewal, grace, courage, and always a calling. And that's amazing. That's amazing good news. You know what? I don't think we can be amazed too much. I think we can get dull in our amazement. I think we can be resistant. I think we may cling to tradition. But God's amazing work is going on right now. It's going on right here in this sanctuary. It's going on right here in Orange Park, in Jacksonville, and across the world. Nothing is too late. No one is too ordinary. You don't have to go to Costa Rica. Nothing is impossible with God. So look around you now in this sanctuary. Take a moment. Or look inside of you at your life for a moment. And find one thing with your eyes or with your heart. And allow yourself a moment of amazement. In just another moment or two, we'll be witnesses to a baptism. Baptism is a mystery where we experience the wonder and amazement of God's love. And today we'll see this visible sign. Um, that's why Christ gave us a visible sign that we could see and even hear when I poured the water in of God's love and God's covenant and God's grace. And we will hear Charlotte's response in faithfulness. This is where God will claims us as beloved children. And this is where we remember that God's hand is with us. And this is where we remember that we are washed clean in these waters because of the righteousness of Christ, not our own. And this is where we remember that we're filled with the Holy Spirit that filled Zechariah and Elizabeth and Mary and John and Jesus. And this is where we're given the will to do what God asks us to do and not what our neighbors think, but to follow God's will in all of our life. And the people will be amazed. To God be the glory. Amen.